forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, you. with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, was listed high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. Mercifully grant that we, who glory in the mystery of our redemption, may have grace to take up our cross and follow him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson is taken from Isaiah 45. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? There is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior, and there is no one besides me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, from my mouth has gone forth in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, our righteousness and strength. All who are incensed against him shall come to him and be ashamed. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall triumph and glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is uh, Psalm 98, uh, verses 1 through 4. And uh, Steve, if you'd like, I've shared the screen. If you'd like us to uh, perhaps do all uh, 10 verses and then do oh, it responsively, okay. we could probably do that. All right. That'll be great. We'll do it uh, by uh, whole verses. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. With his hand and holy arm has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness shall he openly, he has openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy for the, to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. The epistle is taken from Paul's letter to the Philippians. But the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in him, and being found in him form, he humbled himself and became subject to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name at the name of Jesus every knee shall bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, now is the judgment of this world. 
now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, we have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? Jesus said to them, the light is with you for a little longer. You walk while you have the light so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light so that you may become children of light. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. One of the um, aspects of a, of a church's approach to reading the scriptures is that we set it within the framework of a liturgy, and we always tie that liturgy to a particular sort of concept for the day. Today is the Feast of the Holy Cross. And I've always found that such an ironic title for a day. Because maybe because, well, having read through the scriptures and understood the history of, of the time of Jesus, I have a particular feeling about how bad the cross was. The cross was a terrible thing. Um, if you want to get an image of what the cross meant at the time of Jesus, imagine right now if instead of putting a cross in a church, or put, hanging a you know a pendant on which you have your cross on a chain. Imagine putting an, an electric chair at, at the top of the steeple or at the back of the altar or around your neck to give the image of what you mean by what you do with the cross. And it doesn't come across very holy. But see, we don't make things holy. God makes things holy. We may want to revere something. We may, uh, may want to honor something. We may want to say it looks holy to us. But the fact of the matter is we can't make anything holy. God makes things holy. And God has this ironic sense to himself. I mean, it's an incredible thing. Sometimes it's humorous. Sometimes it's pretty serious. But it's always ironic to take things that are normal or take things that are at the low esteem and turn them on their head and make them important and make them honorable. Paul talks about this constantly in several different passages in several different letters about how God has turned things upside down through Jesus. Now, Jesus wasn't the first to do that. God did that again and again. We read that in Isaiah this morning in which God is saying, look, I've told you all this, but you haven't listened. I'm going to do things different than what you thought. You can't really know what I'm going to do because it's going to be different. I'll tell you about it, but you may not believe it. And that's exactly what Jesus encountered when he came. They all thought they knew what the Messiah was going to do or how he had to do it or what was going to happen. And Jesus turned it all on his head, and in the most dramatic fashion, in the most dramatic fashion, the cross was indeed ironic, particularly to call it the Holy Cross. So what are we supposed to take from this today, living today, where we have come to accept the cross, and we don't hold it in the kind of dread or embarrassment? or humiliation that it was at the time that Jesus was there. And what he chose to humble himself, as Paul said, even to the death on a cross. People would have understood exactly what Paul was saying. We, we have to come to some understanding of it. But what are we supposed to take from it? Well, the irony that God always uses is the irony of putting things that we don't expect. In other words, to do things differently than we would do ourselves or how we think is important. 
And that comes down to a very interesting thing that the cross indicates to me. And that is God's love. Instead of doing what would normally be expected of a king, of a God, of power beyond all understanding, certainly is not to be humbled, certainly not to put yourself in circumstances that the world would consider embarrassing and humiliating. And yet that's what he did. And for that reason, we can understand love better, much better. Let me give you an example, a personal example. When I was an early teen, I struggled with self-esteem pretty badly, as a matter of fact. I had gained, uh, I was 130 pounds and I grew from five foot six to six foot two in a year without gaining any weight. I could hide behind stop sign poles. It was not a good time for me. And it was reflected in my attitudes and my approach to life. But fortunately, I was a church goer and I went to a priest in my church and poured out my heart. Now, the interesting thing was he told me, he says, yeah, you're sort of a little, little twerk. You're right. But you know, you don't always have to be that way. Let me say something to you, Steve. He said, you know, if you were the only one who was really a nasty little kid, an unfortunate person, someone not worthy of being uh, loved, Jesus would have come and gone on that cross just for you. His love for you is such that he would do it just for you. You are worthy of his love. Regardless of how you see yourself or how struggling you may be doing or how you're acting to try to get people to love you, you need to come to accept that God loves you. And once God loves you in your mind, once you understand that, then it doesn't matter what other people think. And guess what? You will be different. You will be different. So for me, the cross has always been a symbol of God's love for someone who doesn't deserve it, but somehow warrants it. So I would encourage each of us on those moments in darkness when maybe something creeps upon us in which we are not all that we could be or should be. And we know it. And we get down on ourselves and we think we are truly unworthy and that God has um, questionable interest in us. Look at that cross. Look at the irony of the cross. And understand that that cross represents God's love for the very people who put him on that cross. The undeserving people who nailed him to that cross. And we're certainly as worthy as they. Amen. Amen. Let us express our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, of one being with the Father to him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
let us offer prayers at this time. The church I was in, Houston, we had a service in which we didn't use the prayer book directly because the people couldn't read. They were illiterate mostly. So what we found is if we just offered up a time of silence for prayers to be offered, and we've done so either privately or aloud, we found things that were needful that we did not understand maybe without the moment of silence. So I propose at this point we have just a moment of silence and then raise the questions or the concerns or the needs as we feel led. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for our world, for those awakening to extreme poverty this morning, for the hungry, for the sick, and for the needy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, there are people who have undergone um, operations and who are in need of operations. And people who are sick with various things, including this virus. We ask that your hand be put upon them, that they know your presence with them, that your healing grace is working in them. That they may be brought to the fullness of health. hearts to see everyone and see everyone as you see them not just as we want to see them in our differences in our politics our religions but Lord Jesus give us open hearts not hearts of stone but roll those stones away and give them your blessing in Jesus name I pray amen for those who are experiencing the effects of weather, particularly in my own family down in Houston, where a hurricane is now over the city, I ask you to protect all those who are in need and help them to deal with each other in love. For these offerings of prayers, O oh Lord, we know that you can read our hearts and those that we are either unable or afraid or don't know what to say, you through the Holy Spirit will say them to us, for us and with us and give us the knowledge of being a part of what you are doing through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father Steve, we have the uh, prayer book queued up. So if you do want to do the confession, we certainly have the words to the Eucharistic prayer and all those things as well. We'll do that. So let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters. We're separated, but that's okay. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. I'm going to use Eucharistic prayer A. Uh,
The Lord be with you. And also yes. with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and neat so to do. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere. To give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and you call us to new life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. That, therefore, with angels and archangels, therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to even death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms on the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit. Be for you the people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament is body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength, and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I will say, uh, as I have been poking in and out of the uh, the Facebook feed, Father Steve, there are just as many people on Facebook as there are on our Zoom call here. So I think that uh, uh, that a lot of us are enjoying using the technology. And uh, I, I also enjoy your ruminations on the cross. And Pat, I wonder, uh, just in our closing moments, what your thoughts are. Uh, about the cross. And I'm going to stop our recording and feed to Facebook. Thank you all. And we will uh, see you again soon.